Well, hi and welcome to this early summer uh, seasonal flow class uh, recorded for you so that you can enjoy this practice at home. What you're going to need is a strap, um, an old dressing gown belt will, will do, and maybe a block. Um, you could, for a little bit of comfort, use a cushion under a knee or a blanket. It's always a really good thing to have. Um, and if you don't have a block, you can make do with a, with a book. Okay, so the practice is um, a practice where we work on two of the meridians associated with the heart, the pericardium and the triple heater. They're, they're located in the arm, so there's going to be quite a lot of practice where we open the arms wide and close the arms, working into this area. Also, some muscles associated with these meridian lines, okay, which I'll talk more about as we go. So it's just going to be a, a slightly shortened practice to the one we would normally do, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I'm going to start lying down, and you're just going to just notice how you feel in this first constructive rest position, just having the legs bent, feet distending, and just take a breath in and exhale with a sigh. Just notice the body, notice how the body feels. It's quite nice to check in before you begin your practice to see where you notice any discomfort in the body, any tension, so that as we practice, we see if any changes occur, see if there's any difference. Then we're working into some fascia in the body and a way in which to work with that is to repetitively move the body to shake, vibrate, move in and out of poses. So I'm going to start by just lifting the legs and the arms and just giving everything a gentle shake, a little vibrate. I'm going to come to the breathing in a minute, but for now, just a little gentle bounce, just feeling a sort of sense of release right down into the shoulders and into the hips. And you're just breathing in and breathing out slowly. Sometimes it's quite nice to exhale audibly out through the lips. <sighs> Taking a, a ha sound, letting go of all your troubles and your worries. <sighs> Take another one of these. <sighs> and then just bring the feet down, bring the arms down. Just rest. Notice if you're tired. Notice if you're lethargic. Or notice your energy level. And cross the right leg over the left leg, right arm over the left arm. You can give yourself a little hug, even pick up the feet, give yourself a squeeze into the center of the body, and then release. And as you release, just let the head rock from side to side. So we do this to the other side, left leg over right, left arm over right. Again, picking up the feet possibly, and squeezing a little bit more firmly in towards the core, and then releasing as you undo. And just rocking the head from side to side. Bring the head to the center, bring the arms in a little bit, step the feet in a little bit. We're gonna work around the hip area just to sort of loosen up any stuck uh, tissues around the hips. So as you breathe in, you're gonna tilt the pelvis towards the ceiling so you get that little tunnel behind the back of the waist. And as you exhale, you're going to rock it back towards the floor. So you sort of flatten the lower back. And you keep going with your breath. Inhale, arching gently. And as you exhale, tilting the pelvis back. It's an anterior and a posterior tilt. But don't do this too strongly. You don't want to work excessively at the start of the class. You want to just make sure that you're easing into any of the stuck areas. So just gently moving the pelvis forwards and back, just to ease out any sort of stuck tension. Good, then come to a neutral position and let the knees fall to the side. So nice, easy twist. Breathing in, rolling through the feet and letting the knees fall in the other direction. Go with your breath, breathing in as you lift, exhaling as you lower. Again, inhale and exhale. So just repetitive movements and when you repeat a movement there's an opportunity just to let the body go a little bit deeper not a lot just maybe just moves a little bit further into the pose and then come back to center 
and bring the knees up and circle the knees and as if you're massaging into the area around the hips so you might need to hold the knees to do this if not you can just bring the arms by the side of you just, just as if you're smoothing out any of those stuck surfaces take it in the other direction breathing in and breathing out just giving yourself a little bit of a massage around the buttocks get bring the feet to the floor send the arms up towards the ceiling lift one up straight up towards the ceiling lifting the shoulder away from the ground as you exhale lower the arm down just repeat this on the other side so just stretching through the sort of shoulders just reaching towards the ceiling just letting the body almost just drop back down to the earth again so using a little bit of awareness of gravity just do a few of these again just repeating the movements to give yourself a little massage hold on to the elbows like a cossack dancer and let the arms fall to one side again massaging through the shoulders or you can just let the head move with the arms breathing in and breathing out just giving the shoulders a nice massage and then come to the center and bring the arms down by the side of you. So you've opened up a little bit through the hips and the shoulders, pressing into the feet, lift the hips, send the hips away from the shoulders into a low bridge and then lower the hips down comfortably, just dipping the pelvis back slightly so that the hips touch down before the sit bones and then adjust the feet and interlace the fingers behind the head, lift the head up, make sure it's completely centered and then lower the head back down. So you've got a nice neutral centered spine, a little bit of opening around the hips and shoulders. And just bring the hands to the belly. So we're just gonna bring awareness to the breath coming in and out of the body. So nice, long, smooth inhale and a nice, long, smooth exhale. As you breathe in, feel a sense of spaciousness, openness, freedom. And as you exhale, a sense of contracting in. So just a little bit more awareness of core. So the idea of the navel dropping towards the spine. A little bit of length through the spine on the in-breath. And as you exhale, a little bit of sense of contraction into the body, as if you're giving every little cell in the body a gentle squeeze. As you inhale, you soften, you relax, you expand. And as you exhale, you just gently contract. And the breath is samraviti, it's, it's equal length, same amount of time for the in-breath and the same amount of time for the out-breath. Try to stay with this breathing through the practice. And once we've established that breathing, we can begin to work a little bit more. So we're going to bring the right knee into the rib cage and extend the left leg along the ground. So just stretching out through the front of that extended leg while we draw this right thigh in towards the ribs. So then going to take it slightly on the diagonal. So there are a few muscles that are associated with these um, organs and meridians that we work with. So the glutes and the piriformis in the buttock area is a target muscle. So just bringing the legs slightly on the diagonal. So I'm drawing it across towards the left shoulder ever so slightly, and that will just feel the stretch into that buttock area. Take another breath here. And then release the foot down to the thigh and take that into a rotation. So using the same left hand, draw the leg across. Depending on the flexibility in your spine, you, you might just lift the hips a little bit, or there might be an opportunity to take the hips so that they're perpendicular to the shoulders. You can keep the right arm down and maybe take the head away from the direction of the twist. And just breathe that same smooth, even breath in and out. Maybe pausing at the top of the inhale and pausing at the end of the exhale. Good, come back onto your back. 
So we're going to take the leg up towards the ceiling, interlace the fingers behind the thigh, so single leg raiser. And I would bend the other leg and bring the foot to standing. So just feeling through the back of the leg, the hamstrings. Then probably taking your strap. Unless if you can comfortably hook the big toe with the first two fingers and thumb and hold the nail, then do that. But if it's a little bit of a reach and the leg has to bend a lot, then just wrap the strap around once. Doesn't matter if the leg is slightly bent. And what we're going to do is mirror the movement with this left leg as well. So whole leg is going to turn out slightly to the right. And we're going to allow the leg to move out to the right. And as we do that, the left leg is also falling out to the left. So we get a V-shape through the legs. So you're feeling the stretch through the adductors. The adductors, the muscles on the inside of the thigh that move the leg out and in. Breathing in, bring the legs back in. Again, letting that left knee scissor in, switching the strap into the other hand and bringing the leg across the body. We're sending the heel away a little bit so we do feel it through the back of the leg. But this is also feeling into this right hip and buttock area. The left knee's falling in. Bring it back, we'll do that once more either side. So switch the strap each time so the arms aren't crossing over the body. Let the left knee fall out. Um, feeling the stretch through the the inner thighs, the adductors, the adductors are a linked muscle. And one in particular that we're focusing on is gracilis that comes all the way from the sort of pubic bone area, inner thigh to just beneath the knee. Inhale, come back into the center, switch the strap into the other hand, let the left knee fall in, keep the right hip down as you bring the leg across. And then back to the center, maybe two hands on the strap, just sending the heel away. And then release, unhook. Bring the knee in, bring both knees in. Just take a moment. Maybe you notice that right knee comes a little bit closer towards the body than the left leg. And then just extend that right leg away. So when you work with fascia, you can make some quite dramatic changes in the body. So drawing this left thigh in, extending through the front of the right hip. Then bring this leg slightly on the diagonal. So it's not a big movement there. So you're feeling it more into your buttock glute area. Bring in the sole of the foot down to the right thigh using the same hand to take you into a twist. This left arm stays down as the hip lifts away from the ground, depending on your flexibility or depending on how high the hip moves. Just taking the gaze gently in the opposite direction. Good. Inhale, come back onto your back. Extend the leg towards the ceiling and bend the other leg and bring the foot to standing. Makes it a little bit easier to work with this leg early in the practice. Just feeling the stretch through the hamstrings before you take the strap or hold the big toe. Wrapping the strap around once you have a little bit more control. Try to hold the strap as close to the foot as you can. So you're allowing this left leg to, to move out, feeling the stretch through the inner thighs all the way down to the sort of pubic bone area. And the right leg falls out to the right. So you probably can't tell that from the direction of the camera. Breathing in, bring the leg back in, switch the strap into the other hand, wrap it around once, let the right knee fall in as you take this left leg across. You can see here, getting the stretch into this buttock area, keeping the hip down so the leg isn't completely following in the stretch. Breathing in, come back again, switch hands and take it across. Whole leg moves out in the hip socket as you take it out. Let the right knee fall to the side. And you're just moving slowly, you're not in a rush, you're taking your time. We want to really work in a way that offers ourselves kindness as we practice at the moment. Come back into the center and then expand the heel towards the ceiling and just stretch a little bit more through the back of the leg. And then unhook the strap, bring the knees in. Just compare the two sides and either rolling onto your side and coming on up to seated or rocking on up to seated. Yep. Bring the legs around, come into all fours. So having the hands underneath the shoulders, take a few circles of the shoulders and the hips. 
And just this idea, this concept of working in a way that is hydrating for the joints and smoothing out any of the stuck tissues that you might have in the body. You're pushing back into child's pose. So feet come together, knees are wide as you sink the hips back towards the heels. Put that lovely stretch down through the spine. And then inhale as you lift up and lower yourself down onto your belly. Just stretch it out, so stretch the arms out, stretch out through the tops of the feet. And then walk it back into a sphinx pose. Elbows directly under the shoulders, arms extended from the elbows. And I quite like just to wriggle my hips in a little bit closer. And just notice, before we do any work, just notice the back bend. For some, the arms will be further forward so they have a less strong back bend. So just making sure that the back bend is suitable for you. Okay, then we're just gonna turn to look over that right shoulder. So we get a little stretch through the left side, breathing in, back into the center. As you exhale, turn to the left. And we're just gonna repeat this side to side. So you can either stay with the legs as mine are, just extended, or you can start to bend into the leg in the direction that you turn. See so sort of coming into a bit of a gecko pose and then extend it away. And just sliding the leg, working with the rhythm of the breath. Yes. Just continue. These sort of repetitive movements only really work if you do a number of them to get the sort of benefit through the fascia. And then come back to your back bend. And some of you will be able to press into the palms and get a slightly stronger shape. So more of a cobra pose, Bhujangasana. But if this is too intense, then please stay down on the forearms and just breathe into that opening. Enjoy that sense of energizing around the kidney area in the lower back. And then slowly lower down, come all the way down onto your belly. So we're gonna do a shoulder stretch now. So I'm going to wriggle over a little bit so you can see my arm. So I'm going to stand the arm out at the shoulder. The other hand, the palm is going to press down onto the floor and the elbow is going to point up towards the ceiling. So I'm going to show you this from the other side as well. And I'm going to roll onto this right shoulder, get stretched into the front of the shoulder, into the pectoral muscles. So if I swing around, I'll show you that from the other side. So I've got my right arm out, I'm rolling onto my side. So I'm getting the stretch into the shoulder here. Legs are slightly bent, the palm is pressing into the floor. So this is the first position and this is where you might stay. Some of you can step that left leg behind the right, sole of the foot comes to the floor. And this will just intensify the stretch. So this is the sort of fascial connection through the body. There's an additional stretch as well where you take the arms straight up towards the ceiling, turn the palm to face behind you and bring the arm straight back. So don't cheat by bending the elbow. It's not going to give you a stronger stretch. And I'm just reaching gently for the other arm. I'm not intending to hold it. I'm just looking for the sense of stretch across the front of the chest, the pectoral muscles, into the shoulders. And it's a lovely, really opening feeling and then gently release. Bring the arm down, roll onto your belly and just bring the arms by the side of you, okay? Just rest and just experience and notice what it feels like at the shoulders. And then turn the palms down, press into the floor as you inhale, let the chest move away from the ground. The feet might lift and then lower as you exhale. And do this once more, breathing in, pushing the floor away as you lift and then lower. And do the other shoulder. So arm comes out at shoulder height. If this is too intense, then just bring it down a little bit lower. Okay, other arm bends, palm presses into the floor, push onto that hand to roll onto the side. Again, I'll move around to show you from the other direction. Okay. Using this hand as a little motion sensor. So if it's intense, I might even be here and this might be enough. So you know, not taking it too far. Maybe you can step this foot behind the other leg. 
and maybe send the arm up as well, palm faces behind you and you just send it straight back, not intending to reach the two hands together to join. Breathe. Enjoy that lovely stretch. Good, and then release the arm back down. Good. Again, come down onto your belly. Either again, repeat the pose we've just done or see if you can bring the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers and lift the hands away from the hips. Oh, feels good. And then exhale, lower. Take one more of these, breathing in as you lift. And then exhale, release. Good, bring the hands down, push up, shoulders and hips and slowly back into child's pose. Sink the hips back towards the heels, release. Try and enjoy each moment of the practice. When you give yourself this time, it's just so important. Bring the hands under the shoulders, knees under hips. Arch the spine, cat cow, arching the spine. As you inhale, send the tail away, drop the pelvis and lift the gaze gently. I'm keeping the arms quite straight. So I'm just really working with the spine here. Just keeping the shoulders nicely stabilized. So the muscles, the rotator cuff muscles around the shoulders help to keep the, the humerus bone, the arm bone safely in the shoulder socket. So just keeping the shoulders nice and secure as I focus on working with the spine. Good. And then we're going to come to a down dog. So if you're not taking down dog and you just want an alternative, you can stay with those. Or you could do active moving back into child's pose, feeling the same stretch. If you're coming into down dog, make sure that the hands are centered under the shoulders and the arms are drawing in. Sense of containment around the shoulders. Toes tuck under and the heel sends you back. The gaze goes back, but I'm going to keep the knees a little bit bent. And then I'm going to come forwards and lower for the in-breath. So we're keeping with this theme of moving in and out of poses so we get this sort of fascial stretch as we move and just work at your own pace sending the thighs back the heels back letting the head be relaxed you take one more of these if you can stay stay for a moment in down dog maybe a little pedal of the heels just notice how far the heels are from the ground Okay. And then walking slowly to the top of your mat, stay low, come into your forward fold. And then rooting through the feet and inhaling as you rise up. Bring the arms up. And as you exhale, bring the hands back down to the chest. Good. So we're going to come and do a little bit of work um, standing. So working with the hips. So this is a figure of eight movement. And there isn't really a wrong way to do this. This is just your way. So I'm going to send my right hip forwards out to the side and back. And then I'm going to go to the other hip, left hip forwards out to the side and back. So it's like I'm trying to sort of describe or draw a figure of eight movement with my hips. And it's as if the hip is moving around the top of the leg bone. The weight is shifting a little bit from foot to foot. And the knees will open and close as you do this. So it's like a little little dance that you're doing with the pelvis. And I'm trying to do it in a way that creates some hydration in the body. You can bring the arms into it. You can have your hands on your hips. You can get the shoulders a little bit involved. You Sometimes it feels nice to move a bit quickly. And sometimes it's nice to move a little bit slowly, especially if you find a little stuck area where you know, that's a little bit tricky to move. You might want to go a little bit slower. And then other places you might want to move a little bit quicker. But watch the knees. Make sure you're not bringing any discomfort or tension into the knee joint. Okay. It's me feeling good when the hips are really nice sort of oil. You can come to stand and bring the feet directly under the hips. So we're going to hold the middle finger into a point here called the Shenzong point right in the center of the chest directly between the nipples. And this is an energetic point associated with the pericardium that we're working with in the arm, okay? It's nice to make that connection to the heart. 
I'm going to draw this figure of eight movement with the arm. So the palm's going to face up as you turn to the side and as if you're doing a front crawl stroke, bring your arm up and over. Palm then goes down and then you swoop it. And the other half of the figure of eight is if you're doing a back crawl. And you just keep going and you can see how my knees are just opening and closing as we do this. But watch the movement of the arm. Make sure you're not only moving the hands. See if you can have the arm nice and relaxed. So this is a sense of letting go as you move. And again, I'm just making that connection to this energetic point in the body. Working with what the pericardium, we're very much working with emotional stability. It's a lovely meridian to work with. It runs right down the center of the arm, all the way to the middle finger. And there's nice points around the wrist and the palm area linked to calming the mind. Just think about that whole arm relaxing as you move that. Okay, do one more. And come in and you'll notice that arm feels a little bit longer than the other. So go to the other side again, hold that central point. This figure of eight movements, nice and relaxed, working from the shoulder all the way to the fingertips as you move, breathing. Finding that space, freeing up any of the stuck tissues. Lastly. And then coming in, noticing the two arms. Take a breath in, exhale, and have a little bounce. <laughs> and then just fall at the hips, just let the body come down. Breathe in, and on that pause, come on up to standing and give the body a little shake. Shaking is a really nice way to get into those tissues. And then fold. Good, breathe in, and then come on up. And a little bounce at the top and then fold. Inhale, and come on up. Exhale, let's do one more, and you go. Inhale, and come on up. This time we're gonna to go to the side, so just pick one of your legs and fold down, so you won't get quite so deep into the fold, there'll be more restrictions. Breathing in, and then come on up and give the same shake go over to the other side on the diagonal and fold. My knees ever so slightly bent. Inhale and come on up. A little shake. Go again to the other side. You just do this a few times side to side. Breathing in. Come on up. A little shake. Across to the other side. Fold. Inhale. Come on up. Shake. And then go down through the center back into the center. And just take a little sway from side to side. I like to draw that figure of eight movement. Figure of eight is the sign of infinity, so it doesn't have any corners, it doesn't have any sort of edges or nooks or crannies. It's a, it's a smooth shape, so it feels very natural. Okay, take the figure of eight in the other direction. Again, just shifting the weight from side to side. Letting the head and the shoulders move. Come back into the center and then unfurl gently as you come up to stand. You're really rooting down through the feet. Send the arms up. Unfortunately, you can't see my hands. So my camera is not switched to wide angle. And you're going to send the right hand away as you bend into the leg, just stretching up towards the ceiling. Switch sides. So sending the left hand away, bending into the other leg. So just trying to ease out through the side of the body. This is a really nice way to stretch. Good. And then really send the arms wide, send that left arm over the right, give yourself a hug. And take the feet a little bit wider, come onto the ball of that right foot and let the elbows lead me into a twist. Just looking over the shoulders. Inhale, send the arms wide, opposite arm on top, and again, take it into that rotation. So a nice way to sort of work with the nervous system when you work with a twist. Left over right, again, elbow leads the movement. You come onto the ball of the right foot. Inhale, exhale. Good. And just repeat these again. When you repeat the movement, there's an opportunity just to get a little bit deeper, a little bit further. But without pushing, you just let the body move into the shape. Come back to the center, extend the arms, step the feet in so they're underneath the hips. 
Bring the backs of the hands to the cheeks, open through the chest, the armpits. As you exhale, turn to the sides and turning to the left. And I'm going to open up that left arm behind me from the chest all the way out to the middle finger. Inhale, come back. So the pericardial meridian goes from the side of the chest, up around the shoulder, all the way down the center of the arm, through the center of the elbow, the center of the wrist, to that middle finger. Inhale. So this time, both arms as you turn, extend the right arm forward, the left arm back, and stretch from that central point and down the two arms. Breathing in, come back. Exhale again, turning and stretch through the two arms. Good, inhale. Bring the arms behind you. See if you can interlace the fingers. And then we're going to fold. So hinging at the hips as you come forward and down, sending the arms up towards the ceiling. Maybe a gentle shuggle of the shoulders, just a gentle movement, even an opening and closing of the jaw, stretching the mouth. An audible exhale. We'll release the arms a little bit deeper. Breathe in. Audible exhale. And you're just letting gravity create the stretch into the shoulders. We've done quite a lot of work with the shoulders, so I'm hoping it's going to feel spacious. And lower the arms down, pressing down into the feet and slowly coming on up to standing. Just let the arms float up, come into a little balance, an easy balance, pushing the heels up and then sinking into a squat. You can lower the heels if you need to, if not, keep the heels raised, drawing the navel back and then straightening the legs as you come into the Tanasana, your forward fold. Gaze is back, spine is long. <sighs> Good, bending the legs, pressing into the feet, come on up to standing. So we're gonna to come to the top of the mat. And we're gonna come into a sun salute, but with a few variations. So feet to hip distance, send the arms away. Exhale, fold. Partway lift. Step it back with one, step it back with the other. Lower the knees to the ground, bring the hands so they're directly underneath the shoulders. Okay, cross the ankles and we're gonna take three press ups. So when you press up, you wanna lower the hips and shoulders together. Inhale to push the floor away and to rise up. Exhale as you lower, inhale. And we're keeping those arms in towards the center so that the shoulders feel nice and secure. Good. Release. We're going to take this in to thread the needle. So right arm is going to thread underneath the left and I'm going to lower down onto ear and shoulder. Just using that left hand to support me. Good. Press into the left hand, inhale as I come back out. Just place the hand directly under the shoulder. Notice the two sides and then thread that left arm underneath the right. So lower down, ear to shoulder. Again, just using that right hand to support me, keeping the hips above the knees, breathing into the back of the ribs. And good, inhale as you come back up. So if you're too close to the top of the mat, just wriggle back a little bit, come down onto the forearms, but keeping the hips above the knees, hold onto the elbows. Wriggle the elbows forwards, and then let the chest come down. So coming into this puppy stretch, Anahatanasana or a variation with folded arms, crossed arms. Just watch if you're very flexible around the lower back. Try to breathe into the lower back area to support it and let the back bend come a little bit higher up into the sort of mid upper back. And then lift the back ribs up towards the ceiling, transition smoothly forwards and down onto the belly. You'll find yourself back in Sphinx pose where you can find that back bend shape, see what it feels like, maybe even take a sneaky little cobra pose and then lower down. So come into a little bit more core. So tucking the toes under and lifting the hips, you can keep the knees down if you need to or lifting the knees and keeping everything in a nice straight line. Think about your core, so think about drawing back as you exhale around the sort of pubic bone, the pelvic area, navel to spine, zipping up from the pubic bone to the navel, finding a little bit of length in the body as you breathe in. Good, take one more breath here. 
then lower the knees down and lower all the way down to the ground. I'm just going to bring the arms out by the side of us. Yes. And as we inhale, we're going to lift the arms up and draw the shoulders away from the ground. Feet might lift too. And then exhale as we lower. Take one more. Inhale, reach back. So you let the chest, the shoulders lift away from the ground and then release. Good. Bring the hands under the shoulders. Give the hips a little wriggle. Lifting up, pushing back, child's pose. Sinking the hips back. Stretching away from the hands. Good. Inhale, come up to all fours. We're going to work a little bit into um, the hips and into the Achilles a little bit before we take down dog. So expanding the right leg away. So I'm going to come forwards on the mat so that when I extend that right leg, the toes stay on the mat. And I'm going to push back to stretch into the back of the heel and the ankle. As I breathe in, draw the legs straight forwards, so flexing at the hip. And then as I exhale, tucking the toes and sending the back. And I'm just going to go forwards and back a few times. So extending at the hip, as well as stretching through the calf muscle. So one of the calf muscles, the soleus muscle, is a linked muscle. It's the deeper muscle underneath the gastrinemicus muscle. So what you can do is if this feels good and it feels accessible, when you bring the knee forward, you can slide it over the other leg. So you come to a cross leg, Gamakasana sort of style legs with a feeling of stretch into the hips. If the legs don't cross easily, then I would stay with just forwards and back. So the movement across should be fluid, should be easy. And if it's not, then stay with just the straight forwards and back. So I'm going to make one more of these. And I'm just going to linger here a little bit to feel it right into my hip area, my glutes. And then release. And just push back into child's pose. Just notice. In fact, let's come up and take a balance on that side first. So extending through that right leg and extending the left arm away, keeping the hips nice and level. Just take a moment to notice. A little bit of core and then lower. So we'll do the other side. So the left leg extends, toes tucked under, hands directly underneath the shoulders. Okay, same thing, forwards, slide the leg through, extend it back, toes tucked under, coming off my mat a little bit. It's not ideal. So I'm going to come forward slightly. With the toes on the mat, just give me better purchase to do the stretch. Okay, then I'm going to cross the leg. So as I come through, sliding the leg over. Remember this extra bit, if it's not working for your hips, then stay with just the um, flexion and extension of the hip. It's, it's a really nice movement. I spent a lot of time working with Donna Fari, and this is one of her lovely um, sort of fascial movements that she does that just feels so nice. Good. And then we'll just notice that balance. So bringing the hands under the shoulders, opposite arm to leg, lifts. Breathing. Keep that balance, keep that stability, a little bit of core. Good, lower the hand down, lower the knee down. Push back into child's pose. Take a moment. You can stay here and rest, or if you want to come up and try your down dog to see if that work through the Achilles has helped and calves, make sure the hands are directly under the shoulders and you draw the arms in so you feel stable around the shoulder blade. Toes tuck under, heels send you back, thighs move back. Just make sure it's a suitable position for the legs, not too close, not too far, and then start to bring the heels towards the ground. Keep that sense of freedom. Don't hold it in a very sort of rigid way. Try to keep it in a sort of fluid, mobilized, spacious way. And just notice the stretch you have through the backs of the legs. As you take another two breaths here. Last one. Good, looking forwards and walking or stepping the feet between the hands. Come into your forward fold, Uttanasana. 
and then inhale as you float up. Exhale, bring the hands back down. Okay, good. So we're going to do a little bit of a stretch at a wall. So I'm going to use this fireplace here. I'm going to bring one foot to the fireplace. I'm just going to turn so you can see what I'm doing. Holding the fireplace, you can use a wall, you can use a door. I'm going to bring one of my legs and I'm going to bring the foot to the surface and I'm just going to walk it up as high as I can comfortably take it so that I'm not forward folding. I'm just hooking the arm underneath the leg so that I can stabilize myself. And I'm just gonna take a few breaths here and I'm really breathing into the front of the standing leg. So the standing leg is the one that I'm focusing on stretching actually. So it's the psoas muscle that attaches onto your bottom of thoracic, down your lumbar, onto your pelvis, and then onto your leg bone. And it can get a little bit short on one side. So just, just try and do this for about a minute, breathing slowly. Make sure the surface that you're working with is secure. Make sure if it's a door, no one's going to walk through it. You could just use a sofa, an arm of a sofa. And for some people, just putting the, the leg on a chair is enough. Okay, then release. Let's give it a little pedal out. Maybe take a moment to notice. Do the other side, so same thing, walking it up slowly getting it to a suitable height so it's not remember don't always go for your extreme don't always go or seek out something which is as hard as you can possibly make it sometimes doing a little bit less is actually more effective breathe into that lovely ooh, it's a lovely stretch this all the way through the front of that leg you can, you might feel it again into the lower back. So adjust the height of this so that it isn't too tense. Take another breath and then release, step it down. And I'm gonna use the little walk over to just adjust this so that we can come back to face the mat. I'm gonna come and do a standing pose now. So bring your block in. If you have one, but don't worry if you don't because we can improvise. That's I'm going to do it this way first. We're going to step forward with the right foot and bring the block on the inside by the heel. Okay. And bending into that front leg, the back foot, if I was to do this straight on, you can see that the two feet are on separate tracks. They're not one behind the other. As you inhale, bend into this front leg and send the arms up. Yeah, exhale, sink into that leg and just open the chest. Good, breathe in, you can straighten the legs, push the feet into the floor, and as you exhale, sink into it. I'm gonna do the slightly easy variation. It's a harder one I showed some of you guys today where we extended the arms overhead. I'm gonna keep the arms by the side of me as I hinge forwards. So stronger would be to extend the arms straight overhead. I'm gonna try to stay here for a couple of breaths, rooting down through the feet, find that stability, keeping the front leg bent to begin with, staying strong in your core, Good, then release the hands down so that the right hand, the same hand as front leg can find the block. We're gonna draw this right leg so that it becomes long and straight. We're gonna lift up and send the body a little bit away from the ground, keeping the spine long, drawing this top shoulder back to take it into Utita Trikonasana. Either keep the hands on the hip or you can extend that arm. We've got this lovely space with shoulders now, maybe taking the gaze up to the top hand. Any dizziness, just look down, okay? Breathing slowly. And that idea of really opening through that center of the chest and opening into the front of the arms all the way to that middle finger. Exhale, come back down. So if you don't have a block, you can just use your shin, but just be mindful of putting too much weight down through your shin. You need to really hold yourself with your core muscles. Taking it in the other direction. So again, I'm gonna draw back with this right thigh Send the tail away behind me, send the crown of the head away in front of me. Draw the center of the chest towards the right side and open the arms wide. Hand can stay on hip, wide arm stretch. So revolve, pravita, utita trikonasana. Good, a little bit wobbly. And then exhale, come back down into your fold. Again, if you've got a block, maybe place it in front of the leg. I could use the ground. If I'm miles away from both, then just leave the hands on the hips, okay? And melt into this fold. 
just breathing in kindness and peacefulness into the body as you let go. Good. Inhale, bend into the leg. Slowly come on up. Send it into a warrior one. And we're going to step up for a balance. So the little stretch we did at the wall and the stretch we did lying down, we're going to use them now for the standing balance. So either two options, just bringing the arm on the inside of the leg and opening the leg out to the side. So you get that opening into those adductors. Or see if you can hook the big toe with the first two fingers and the thumb and extend the leg. This leg doesn't need to straighten completely. You can work with a slightly bent leg. And then you open the leg out to the side. So making sure that you're not forward folding as you hold the leg, if you're holding it. You can come to a wall or back to your mantelpiece and use that. And if you can extend the heel, we're really working with that um, gracilis adductor on the inside of the leg, the one that crosses the knee joint. Breathing in, bring it back to the center. If you're holding the leg, let go. See if you can balance this for another moment and then release, step it down. Give it a little pedal and we're going to do the other side. So again, left leg. So I'm just changing sides so that it's easier for you to see. Left legs forward this time. Send the arms up, straight legs. Exhale, bend into that front knee. Open through the chest. Do that again, breathing in. Exhale, bring the arms down by the side of you. So if you're pushing a table away, and fold, keeping the leg bent to begin with. Belly is firm, spine is long. Slow breaths, keep rooted. Good. Then release the hands down, draw this left leg so it's straight and rest the left hand on the block. If you're not using the block, just use your shin. Okay. Draw this top shoulder back as you turn, but don't let the head and the body swing over to the right. So keep everything in this plane. Hand to hip. Spine is long, you get this lovely opening down through the side of the waist and a wide arm, that wide arm, that pericardium stretch from the center. And it comes from sort of the side of the chest up over the shoulder and down the middle of the arm all the way to the middle finger. Breathe, feels really good. Really brings in a sense of emotional balance when you work with this meridian. Exhale as you lower down, switch hands. Again, just center yourself first, drawing this left leg back, very gently turning in towards that leg. Find the inwards rotation. Maybe the hand stays on the hip, maybe the gaze stays down. If the arm is extended, just keep the inside edges of the fingers touching. That helps to quieten the mind. And then exhale as you come back to face the ground. Come back into your fold, so either using your block using the ground or not quite there yet, just hands to hips. You might be up here, it's completely fine. Breathing and just softening with every breath, releasing any remaining tension that you might have in the body. Good, and then coming up, inhale, bend into that front leg, let the arms float up. Coming for our balance on the other side, so. Sita has the Pitangus Vasana. So having the arm on the inside of the leg and just opening, coming to hold onto a surface if you need with the left. If you're taking the bind, bringing the foot to the hand as you expand, trying to keep tall, not worrying if this leg is straight or not, as you open the leg out. If you're feeling the stretch through the inner thigh, if you're just beneath that knee, then you're definitely finding those adductor muscles. Breathing. Balance is so good for you really having to focus on a single spot in front of me. Breathing in, bring it back in to the center, letting go of the leg as you lift. Any balance is good, so if this is too strong, just standing on one leg for a few breaths is sufficient, and then release. Send the arms away, inhale, exhale, fold. And come down to the ground, stepping it back with one, stepping it back with the other, lower the knees to the ground. Let's take our three little press ups, really good ones. Breathing in, push the floor away. Exhale, so you notice how the elbows brush the side of the rib cage as I lower. Good, taking it into our twist a little bit stronger so the right arm can open to the side and we thread the needle, Sakya Andrasana. Yeah, maybe the left arm extends forwards and you open into that armpit. 
good bring that hand back in and open out again as if you're opening that wing exhale lower down take it to the other side inhale exhale post the arm through lower down your shoulder stretch or walk that arm forwards as you breathe you can keep the hand where it was or you just take this little add on take another breath here good exhale bring that hand in inhale as you open exhale come down puppy stretch so make sure you've got enough space at the top of your mat to come down you can either repeat the one we did before you can do a half variation with one arm bent one arm extended or two arms extended keeping the hips back over the knees and let the rib cage come down puff up a little bit into the lower back so breathe into that area down the sort of tail of the crura which is the sort of tendons of the diaphragm so breathe down into the base of the spine and just let the back bend come a little bit higher up into the mid upper back really open into the armpit so the heart meridian starts in the armpits this is a great one for heart quite a strong one to work with your emotions this feels a strong pose breathe in lift the back ribs up transition forwards as gracefully and smoothly as you can to come back into your Sphinx pose or maybe Cobra pose, if that feels like the right place to be. Good, lower down and come into your little bit of core so you can keep the knees down or you can lift the knees. Strong core, breathing in and out, find length in the spine on the inhale, dive through navel to spine on the exhale. And zipping up pubic bone to navel, connecting sternum to pubic bone. Good. And then lower come all the way down onto the belly lift one leg and bend it okay palms face down as you inhale push that foot towards the ceiling so you feel it through the front of the thigh exhale as you lower and go again inhale push send the foot away and then lower and do one to the other side again bending the leg pushing the foot away and we're really trying to strengthen and support the spine with these movements so we feel strong release bring the hands under the shoulders lift the shoulders and the hips slowly back into your child's pose and just sink it back take a few breaths here breathe any discomfort away breathe in a sense of calmness and quietness then swing the legs around we'll do a little bit of two sets before we finish so this is where you might want something for your legs. So a cushion would do or a blanket. We're going to bend the right leg and let the knee fall out to the side. So again, it's a So I tend to prop my knee on the right side, but my left side is okay. So don't ever take any um, discomfort through a knee joint. If the knee is sort of dangling in space, I would definitely put something underneath it. Um, if this is too much for your knee, then it's best to do this with two straight legs. And we're just going to focus on this one leg, but that's fine. That leg is then just completely safe as we focus on this leg. You could alternatively just do two straight legs, which is also fine. Okay, so take the flesh a little bit away from that left sit bone and come forwards into your fold. No, meet your restrictions with a bit of gratitude. You know, don't, don't ignore them. So when something restricts your movement, accept it and just be very present with it. Maybe adjusting, coming out of it a little bit if the restriction feels too intense and breathe into that area, softening it. And there's nothing wrong with one side having more of a restriction than the other side. And it's not how far you can go, it's whether you can be present in that pose at that current time. Can you sit with the things that are coming up and is there any way in which you can make that easier good inhale walk it back bend the straight leg and bring the foot to standing remove the block slide this bent leg underneath you can stay with this or this left leg can step over the right leg and the left arm comes on the inside. So if this is all too much, you can stay with this. If this is still too much for this bottom leg, release the bottom leg 
and just have it straight. Okay, so it's just a nice way to get into this Lord of the Fishes pose. So sitting tall and very gently, this is how long my spine is, and then turning into the rotation, just creeping the hand away behind you. And again, bringing the inside edges of the fingers together and taking the gaze softly over that shoulder as you breathe. Just slowly, last few postures now. Just quietening the mind down. Cultivating a quiet mind, a steady mind. Focusing on the breath. And then release, inhale as we come out. We're gonna come or climb into our boats. So, Coming into boat pose at the end of the practice can cause a challenge when you're a little bit tired. So accept it. So sometimes it's better to just let one foot stay on the floor. I'm holding on just behind the backs of the legs. This is an option. Maybe the two legs can lift. But accept where you are with it. Breathe slowly. Strong connection, navel to spine. As you breathe, take one more breath and then release, bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana star, so like this, okay? Again, stretching through those inner thighs. You're gonna hold the shins, breathe in. As you exhale, you're gonna roll back. See how my sternum comes towards the pubic bone. Breathing in length, exhale as a roll back. A little bit more core now creeping into the practice. We want to build that intensity, that inner strength. The element that we work with in the summer practices is the fire element. When you think of fire, you think of summer, you think of heat, you think of strength. Okay, release. Bring the knees in, just give them a little hug. Bring the hands down, just behind the hips, fingers point forward, step the feet hip distance. You can either keep the hips down and just open through the chest, or you can let the hips float up into this tabletop position. And hopefully, because of the work we've done through the shoulders, this actually feels really nice. It can sometimes feel a little bit restrictive around the shoulder. And breathe. Just keeping the gaze down. Good. Lower the hips down. Good. Release the legs. Release the wrist. Give the wrist a little shake. And we'll do the other side. So I'm going to shimmy around to do the other leg. So the left leg bends. Sole of the foot comes into the inner thigh. Take the flesh a little bit away from that right sit bone. If you need something for that knee, bring it in. Inhale, exhale, fold. Notice the restriction. So maybe this is your slightly tighter side. Maybe this is the side that requires you to have something underneath the knee. Maybe it means that you don't go so deeply into the fold. Just be very accepting of what comes up. We're trying to keep that point, that Shenzong point in the center of the chest shining forwards. So I'm not trying to block it with my head. I'm just allowing the body to, to melt into this pose. Feeling a sense of adventure in these poses, sort of an inquiring mind, being creative and imaginative, all lovely qualities of summer. Good. Inhale as we come back. Straight leg, you're going to bend it, bring the foot to standing. This bent leg's just going to slide underneath and maybe step it across. Remember, if that's too much, you can stay with the leg here or release the bottom leg to come into this variation. Okay, so taking it into a twist, sit tall, relax the shoulders, just let any awkwardness or hardness just disappear. Let the breath be smooth. Find the poses helpful. Let go of any awkwardness, any overexcitement. Good, and then release. Come out and into your boat pose. Maybe a little bit stronger, maybe a repeat of the last. Maybe letting go of the legs as you breathe. Really connect the sternum to the pubic bone as you breathe in and out. Take another breath. Release. Bring the soles of the feet together, Vadikanasana. Raise the arms to shoulder height as you exhale, roll down. Inhale, 
palms turn up like you're offering. Exhale, slowly palms face down. Inhale, reaching forward. Exhale, coming down. One more, inhale. And exhale. See if you can come all the way down. And then bring the knees into the belly. Good. So we'll take our back bend here. I'm just going to shimmy down the mat a little bit. So feet hip distance. Reach for the ankles and let the hips lift up. So keeping the head completely still in these back bends where you've got a little bit of pressure. In fact, I'm going to take my hair bubble out. I don't like to have that on when I do these back bends. So keeping the head still, not turning the head. Reaching for the heels, tucking the shoulders under, maybe interlacing the fingers behind the back as you breathe. Some of you will be able to lift the heels and tuck the thumbs underneath the hips, wrapping the fingers around and drop the heels back down. Look quite advanced, but just coming to a place where you feel you're getting that opening through the front of the body, using your leg strength to hold you up in this back bend. You're really working against gravity. One more breath here. To come out, release the arms, palm face up, lift the heels and slowly roll down through the vertebra so that the sit bones are the ones that touch down last. Bring the knees into the body, have a little rock from side to side. You know, take a little circle of the knees in one direction and a circle of the knees in the other direction. Good, extend the legs towards the ceiling, cross the ankles, turn the arms overhead and cross the wrists. And then change the feet and change the wrists. Bring the legs down and bring the arms down. Come for Shavasana. Any discomfort in your lower back, keep the legs bent, feet to standing. Just take the feet wide and let the knees touch. If you have a bolster, bring it in under your legs. If not, just extend the legs along the mat. Adjust the body so it's completely centered. Turn off any lights, cover with a blanket. And just let the palms face up. Adjust the body so that it's completely centered. If you stay here, I'm going to come up and sit while I talk through relaxation. By having the body in a completely centered position, it allows the body to relax. It allows the mind to stay quiet. So take that little bit of time to adjust, to move an arm a little bit one way, to adjust a leg a little bit that way. And think about this line drawn straight down through the center of the body. And once you feel you are balanced and that you are centered, give in to the shape, give in to gravity. Give in to the weight of the body coming down to the ground. Let the eyes close and let the focus move inwards. Notice the contact that you have between the body and the ground. Notice the head, the shoulders, the backs of the arms, the hips and the legs and the heels. Notice the breath, the quality of the breath, how the breath gently moves in and gently moves back out. Feel as if the body is sinking back into the ground. So the front of the body is resting back towards the back of the body. There's a sense of letting go, of releasing. Maybe even organs letting go of their attachments and sort of dropping towards the back of the body to come into contact with the ground. Even the brain, even the brain can release from it attachments and it can sort of settle towards the back of the head. The eyes are sinking towards the back of their sockets and the eyelids are softly settled over the eyes. The space between the eyebrows is broadening and softening and the cheeks are melting away from the eyes. The jaw is relaxed, the throat is relaxed. 
sometimes licking the lips and swallowing can allow you to relax around that area. Become aware of the very edge of your body. The outline. And imagine that outline is blending into the surrounding area. As if someone has taken an eraser and they're rubbing out the outline of your body. So that there are no discernible shapes or corners, edges. And you become one big field of relaxation. From the center of the body out to the periphery, expanding out in all directions. To feel spacious, to feel open, to feel emotionally stable, open minded, to feel calm and relaxed. Take a few more breaths here. Just enjoying that spaciousness that you've created in the body and the mind. And breathe in that calm and tranquility and contentment into the heart center, that emotional center. And as you breathe out, let go of any nervousness, any struggle, any overexcitement. Leaving the heart able to meet all experience of life, all the experiences that we're having to go through at the moment, breathing in that contentment, calm, and some tranquility. Enjoy that place. Remember, you could stay here and you can rest. If you're ready to move, just gently bring the awareness into the body. Maybe start to wrinkle, wrinkle, wriggle, fingers and toes. Consciously breathing, consciously aware of your breath. Have a stretch, stretch the arms overhead, bring the heels together. And when you're ready, bring the knees onto the belly. Have a little rock from side to side and come and rest on your side. Take a moment in that fetal position before you use your arm and leg to help push you up to come to seated. Come into sit for just a couple more moments just to enjoy that feeling that you've created just by moving, breathing, stretching. Moving, breathing, stretching. You know that you can come back to this feeling at any time that you need it. So let the arms float up, bring the palms together. Bring the thumbs down to the crown of the head, to the third eye and to the heart center. Om Shanti. Namaste. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully see you again soon.